places like uh, Rebecca and College that was really bad last year. Um, and then also on Villa Maria, kind of over by um, uh, like Wellborn in that area has also been high. So over the next week, week and a half, um, please uh, be vigilant and, uh, and complete that document as often as you need to. Um, it's very important that we are tracking those uh, for the next two weeks so that we can send the officers because they'll send a, they'll send a an officer on the bus and then they'll have a they'll have patrol cars standing by to pull people over and it sure would be nice if we have the opportunity to hold some people accountable because as as you guys that have been around for any length of time have, know because you've heard us say the most dangerous time for our kids isn't when they're on the bus it's when they're getting off and on, whether that's at the campus or at their bus stop, this is when our kids are at most risk. So please take the time to fill those out. Um, on another note, um, this year again has been going very well considering everything that's going on. I've had numerous compliments about drivers and about the school startup, about pretty much everything that we're doing over here. There's been very few issues with parents. Um, you know, we've uh, been getting really act trying to get really active on Facebook, and the uh, response we've got, we're, we have parents that I used to deal with um, the first year or two where we were having trouble that are now our friends on Facebook. They're commenting on stuff. Um, they're not they don't even have relatives that work here or anything like that they're just people in the community that we've had a lot of contact with over the last couple of years that see what we've done here and see what we've created and that's a really good thing it puts us in a positive light and uh we've had a, a lot of great uh, positive uh press you know since uh the first you know year that i was here uh, thanks to the hard work that everybody that is on this call has done. Um, if you have, if you do have Facebook and you haven't liked us on Facebook, please take a minute to do that. Um, the, uh, if you, if you're not aware of how that works, um, if you like us on Facebook, you'll see our posts and that also enables the people that you're friends with to see our posts as well. The more people that interact with our Facebook page, the more we're able to get the messages out. You know, we post uh, job ads on there. We post public awareness uh, campaigns, like at the beginning of the school year, the last two years I posted and at the semester as well, after, after the uh, Christmas break, I always post uh, the, um, the rules about uh, illegal, you know, about uh, school bus passing and what that looks like. Um, and the more people that can get that, see it and read it, the better. Um, right now, it's amazing. Miss um, Halliburton, I can see her. She, um, when we gave her her award, that uh, reached, I want to say, in the first 24 hours, the Facebook post reached over 2,000 people. And in the first week that was on there, it reached over 5,000 people. So 5,000 people in, in some way engaged with the post that we did about Miss Halliburton. We also did um, uh, several others and thousands. I mean, over, the, over two weeks, we had 13,000 people engage with our, our um, longevity uh, awards that we did. So that was really great. And like I say, the more people that we can get to uh, go on and like that page, the more that that is going to be uh, a benefit for us in the future. So that's all I have. I'm going to turn it back over and uh, I hope you guys enjoy your safety meeting. Um, I really like what uh, Simeon and uh, the trainers have been doing with these. They've been, uh, I think, very beneficial and positive. I've always, whenever I'm watching, I see you guys all interacting and asking questions. So that's a, a great thing. So anyways, have a good day. Thank you. I guess if there's any questions you guys have for me, I can try to answer right now too.
Um, I don't see if I can. I'm on my iPad, so I don't see any notes. Simeon, is there are there any questions? No, no one typed anything in the comment. Okay. Or oh, would there be an online job for to get driver? Um, that's a Simeon question. I answer that at the end, Jennifer. Are you okay. ready, um, Brett Lee? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, can everybody see the screen? Okay, good morning. Um, for this month's safety meeting, we're gonna be talking about student loading and unloading. Um, like Warren said, um, the school bus safety week is coming up. Um, and so we're gonna be talking about safety at our bus stops, um, in the bus, around the bus, and making sure that other vehicles are aware of what they should be doing around a bus stop to keep everybody safe. So the National School Bus Loading and Unloading Survey uh, for 2018-2019, um, I got some statistics from that, um, that students are 70 times more likely to get to school safely on a school bus instead of traveling by car. Um, there's a bunch of other um, positive reasons why students should take the bus to school, um, but safety is the most important. Uh, it also says the greatest risk to a child is not riding the bus, but approaching or leaving one. That means once the student gets on the bus, they're extremely safe. Um, all, most of the accidents and fatalities occur with the child getting to the bus or getting home from the bus. These are the fatalities uh, for 2018-2019, um, where students were um, killed at the bus stop. Um, they all are the students traveling to from home to the school bus, um, and it all most of them have something to do with illegal um, vehicles illegally passing the reds, um, dropping items. Um, things like that shows here that seven of the fatalities were on the trip to school in the morning and one was on the trip home uh, so if you think about it when you're out picking up in the mornings it's it's dark um, you might be a little tired fatigued um, the students might also be fatigued you know they just woke up you know how they drag their way to school um, so not paying as much attention as they should. Four of the fatalities occurred while the child was waiting at the bus stop. Um, so some of the things we'll talk about today are do they have a safe, do the children have a safe place to wait for the bus at the stop? Um, is there high traffic around the area? Is there light for them to be safe? Um, one fatality happened at the school grounds, and we'll also talk about um, paying attention while we're loading. Um, there are teachers and school officials there, you know how they kind of make sure that they're not walking in between the buses and stuff, um, but it's also our job to make sure that they, that you're looking at your danger zones um, and being aware of your surroundings before you move the bus. And three fatalities occurred um, from students walking and running to the bus. Um, so we'll talk about that as well. Seven of them happen in clear weather conditions, whether it be daylight or uh, just, you know, no other big factors dealing with this. So that just means that the driver might have been complacent, um, feeling too confident things like that, and only one occurred when it was cloudy outside. So, we've had very good success over the last 20 years of uh, students being safe in our uh, district. Uh, we, we've had to be very stern and firm on, on 
how we handle students as far as uh, loading and unloading and, and, and student management, but the end result is due to safety, and we've done very well with that. Uh, a lot of that is because of our professional drivers. Uh, they they maintain a sense of urgency and they don't become complacent. Um, they're very professional. They and they care about the children we serve. Uh, we have been fortunate for the last 20 years to not have any fatalities or, or uh, major accidents. I've only gone to one in a hospital and it was very scary and it was and, and it's it's sad because the kids are just trying to go to school, drivers just trying to do their job, and somebody was drinking and not paying attention. Uh, and it's, it's so scary uh, when you get these calls, but we just need to continue to do a great job as we've been doing and remain focused. Not let the small stuff get us off center. All right, now we're going to watch a little video um, explaining the procedures uh, and things we should be looking for at the when we are picking up and dropping off students. Proper adjustment and use of all your mirrors is vital to making sure that no child is in the danger zone. So your first step is to make sure that your mirrors are correctly adjusted to minimize blind spots. The next step is to make sure that the stops are safe and don't create difficulty for the students to wait, board, or leave the bus safely. If you think a stop is unsafe or has become unsafe, bring it to the attention of your supervisor, but do not change the stops yourself. The next thing you need to do when checking the danger zones is to be familiar with when and where you'll be picking up the children. Pay close attention and be familiar with the pickup and drop off points and know how many children are usually there. Also, get to know which children must cross the street. Last year, a group of kids got off the bus and one who usually crosses the street didn't. I mean, I knew he usually crossed, but I wasn't paying attention. Sure enough, as I went to pull out, he ran right in front of the bus. Luckily, I didn't hit him, but he just froze there. And my heart's down and pounding out of my chest. I learned a tough lesson about patience and paying more attention to where the children are all the time. You can't get complacent. As you approach a pickup point, approach cautiously at a slow rate of speed. Scan the entire area for pedestrians, traffic, or other objects before, during, and after the stop. Continuously check all mirrors. Activate the alternating amber warning lights at least 300 feet before the stop. Continuously check the mirrors to monitor the danger zones for students, traffic, and other objects. Be especially careful when there appears to be horseplay, pushing, or shoving, or when all the children aren't in the same place. Bring the bus to a full stop on the right side of the roadway with the front bumper at least 10 feet away from the students at the designated stop. By stopping 10 feet away, it makes sure that no child falls or is pushed under the wheels and forces the students to walk to the bus while clearly in your sight. Put the transmission in park and set the parking brake every time you stop. Turn on the alternating flashing red lamps and make sure that the stop arm is fully extended. And if you have it, make sure the crossing gate is fully extended. Check your mirrors again. Be on the lookout for cars who may try to pass you on the left or the right, even though they're supposed to stop. If you have any doubt about another vehicle stopping, do not open the door until you know that they're stopping. Look at oncoming traffic as well. If they don't look like they're stopping, don't open the door. After the final check and when it's all clear, signal any students who need to cross the street to do so. After they've crossed, open the door and signal the students to approach and board the bus. Students should only board when they get a signal from the driver and continuously monitor all the mirrors. Count the number of students at the bus stop and be sure that they all board the bus. If you can, learn the names of all the children. 
If a regular student is missing, ask the other children if they know where that student is. Now, if you cannot account for a student, secure the bus, turn off the engine, take the key, set the brake, and check around and underneath the bus. Don't move the bus until they're accounted for. Make sure the students board in a single file and use the handrail. If it's dark, the dome light should be on. Allow time for the students to all sit down before you move the bus. If your bus has seat belts, make sure that they're being used. Never tolerate pushing, shoving, or running while the children are getting on and off the bus. It's just too dangerous. Now, before pulling out, check all the mirrors to make sure that no one is running to catch the bus. Many of these practices also apply when you're dropping the kids off at the end of the school day. As you approach the drop-off point, scan the entire area and take note of any potential problems. Activate your ambers 300 feet from the stop. Check your mirrors and be on the lookout for cars who may try to pass you on the left or right, even though we know that they're supposed to stop. If you have any doubt about another vehicle stopping, wait until you know that they're stopping. And like before, look at oncoming traffic as well. If they don't look like they're going to stop, don't open the door. Bring the vehicle to a complete stop. Turn on the red school warning lights and make sure the stop arm is fully extended. If your bus is equipped with one, make sure the crossing gate is fully extended. The students should remain seated until they're told to exit. Check the mirrors again for traffic, and if all clear, open the door and allow the children to leave the bus. Count the kids away as they exit, and then count again to confirm they're safely out of the danger zones before pulling away from the stop. Now, if it doesn't add up, someone's in the danger zone. Use the goal procedure. Get out and look. Now, if any children need to cross the street, make sure and follow safe practice number one. That's 10 feet away and 10 feet ahead. Wait until they're all assembled and ready to cross. They should be far enough ahead that you can see their feet. Once you've checked your mirrors and all vehicles have stopped and it's safe, signal the children to cross the street. Don't forget to toot the horn and wave them back to safety if anything comes up that's unsafe. Make sure they stop at the bumper and look left, right, left, and then at the driver. As the driver, you need to be diligent. Students might not always do what they're supposed to do. I have one stop where 12 kids get off the bus at the same time. They all go in different directions. It's impossible to count that many kids away. What should I do to make sure the danger zones are clear? That's a great point, and there's no simple answer. I guess if all the kids are walking away together in a group, you might be able to count quickly the 12 kids away. But I get it, if they're all walking in different directions, at different speeds, and by the time you've counted some and are looking for others, the first kids may have moved back into the danger zones. What do you think? Well, I, I think in this case, when you think it's clear, the safest thing to do is put the bus in gear. Beep the horn, move a couple inches, beep again, then move more. Basically, you start slow, so anyone in the danger zone can be alerted and get out safely. And if you're really unsure, you can go, get out, and look. Better slow and safe than quick and sorry, huh? Finally, never, I repeat, never back the bus when children are nearby. When parked at a school or any place where there's more than one school bus, you should park the buses bumper to bumper. That way the children can't walk between the vehicles or wander into the danger zones or the street. And finally, after you drop the students at school, check to make sure there are no sleeping kids still on the bus and nothing has been left behind. Then do the same after you drop the last student at the last stop. Okay, so that video covered um, the procedures um, when loading and unloading. We, you know, we should know those. Um, we practice them every day. Um, now we're going to get into some of the stop, the hazards um, that you face at the bus stop. Uh, we're going to identify them and then how we can react to them. Uh, so we have categorized them in four types of hazards. Um, we have fixed road elements, uh, weather and environment, movable objects, and distractions. Hi, my name is Amelda. I have been with the transportation for two years. On my route, I have to play 
close attention to the overhanging trees, buildings, not the boxes that hinder my direct view of students waiting at the bus stop. If I can, can directly see the students, I have approached the stop with extra caution to make sure and aware of the approaching bus. I have a couple of sharp turns and elevation changes that block the view of my loading lights to oncoming traffic. I make sure to turn on my loading lights for an, far enough in events and make sure oncoming traffic is fully stopped before letting my students cross the street. When I have to make a stop at a high traffic roadway such as Highway 21 or near a busy intersection, I pay close attention to the traffic approaching at a high rate of speed. Lessons learned. We keep getting better. Okay, so fixed road elements. Um, like Amelda said, we have buildings and trees, um, signs and mailboxes, um, anything that hinders your direct view from the student waiting at the bus stop and also um, hindering your other drivers view of your loading lights showing them that you are about to load or unload a child. Um, the road itself can also be a hazard. Uh, if you have stops that are on sharp curves um, before or after curves, um, any kind of elevation, anything that blocks that view of the child. Um, divided highways and high traffic roadways, um, those are also things that you know, we call them fixed road because they are there on th at that bus stop every day. They don't change. You know that they're there, and um, you know that you're going to have to deal with them. Very good. Look at you. Howdy. Uh, my name is David Uswell, and uh, I'm a sub driver here uh, with transportation. Uh, and uh, favorite part of my day uh, subbing on the bus is uh, delivering the kids safely uh, to their uh, to their schools and uh, you know safety at the bus stop is uh, is very important when we pick our kids up uh, and it is challenging especially when you add uh, the uh, factor of, of weather uh, for me uh, it's more rainy days or foggy days, actually. Uh, and on those days, you know, the students tend to alter the way they do things a little bit. You know, they may be in a car, they may be on a porch, they may be standing in the house, you know, they may be sitting in the house uh, waiting for the uh, bus uh, to pull up. And uh, in the afternoon, you know, uh, they may to avoid a puddle or try to, uh, uh, you know, some way to get faster, you know, to where they're going, not looking both ways, you know, when they get out of the, uh, uh, when they get out of the bus to cross the street. Uh, so, uh, you know, these things can be avoided uh, in a lot of cases. They can be avoided uh, by uh, us maintaining our normal procedures at the stop. I like to do though on the weather related days or uh, I, uh, I try to take it a little slower uh, on the stops. I try to throw my reds a little sooner uh, maybe to help traffic understand that I'm coming to a stop and it's a poor conditions. Uh, I take my time. Uh, don't rush uh, to do those stops. Uh, let the kids know at the door that they need a they need to slow down. They need to look both ways if they have to, uh, and direct the kids more. Uh, just uh, again, in order to uh, in order to keep them safe. So uh, I know we have a lot, a lot of factors that we have to take into account. We have to keep our eyes on. We have to keep our eyes 
eyes on traffic. We have to keep our uh, eyes on the surroundings at the stop. But again, with weather, I think we just have to take extra precautions. So again, slow down, take your time, uh, encourage the kids, don't let them just jump and run off the bus. Uh, encourage them to slow down. Good. So, um, you know, on those rainy days or when it's when it gets colder outside, um, students like to wait in their cars or inside. Um, if it's raining, they might be on a porch. Um, they might be under cover somewhere near the house. Uh, make sure that you don't alter um, your steps. You still approach the stop as you would. Uh, stop at the same location. Uh, activate your ambers and reds. Just give that student a little more time to get to the bus. Um, be looking not their normal route, as Mr. Goosewell said. You know, they might not go through the front yard grass like they normally do because it's wet or puddles. Um, they might go down a sidewalk. They might go down the driveway. Um, but just give that child extra time to get to the bus. You know, be understanding. You don't. You wouldn't be standing out there in the pouring rain, um, or you wouldn't be standing outside if on those super cold mornings. Um, there might be extra vehicles around the stop. You know, if most of the children walk from down the street, their parents might drive the car to the stop. Um, so you got to be careful and make sure that everybody has gotten out of the cars. There's nobody that's going to hop out. Um, you know, there's always that one straggler that takes his time and, you know, hugs mommy. Uh, so just make sure you account for all the students. You, if you're on a normal route, you should know your children, know their names, how many are getting on and off at the stops, and just give them some extra time. Um, puddles, slip and fall, um, just a lot of extra time when it's bad weather out there. Um, and the fog, like y'all said, uh, limited sight distance as you approach and depart the stop. You'll be coming up on that stop, especially those of you who have country routes. Y'all know how bad that fog can get out there. And they could be, the children could be standing at the end of the driveway, um, and you can't really see them until you are pretty much at the stop. Um, so, like Mr. Guzwell said, approach with, slow down, approach with caution. Um, turn on your ambers a little sooner to communicate with the drive, the other vehicles that you're about to make a stop. Also the time of day, um, the position of the sun can hinder your view if, you know, going home in the afternoons, that sun beams down. Um, and just like this picture, it can get on your windshield, it could um, glare from the hood of the bus. Uh, if there's any puddles in the ground, things like that, those reflective signs. Uh, if you ever, you can adjust um, yourself, you can bring down that sun visor, um, but just approach with extra caution, slow down, and try and get a better view of those students. All right, movable objects. Uh, uh. I've been driving for Brian Transportation for about a year now. And we, as drivers, always have to watch out for moving hazards. Uh, parents, students, even animals and wildlife can be moving hazards. And trash cans as well can be moving hazards. We never know when the wind is blowing or an animal has knocked the trash can over. So we always have to pay attention because we never know um, the, the split second when something can dart out in front of us. Um, we want to make sure 
that would count our students that are boarding and getting off the bus and if they're crossing in front of us we want to make sure that we count them again to make sure that they are all crossing in front of us and make it safely because you never know when a student may drop something or the wind may be blowing something out of their hand and they may reach down to get it so we want to make sure that all our students are safe and uh, make it across safely Okay, good. So um, looking at the comments, uh, Ms. Hardy saying that uh, the strobe light um, used to help alert traffic, if you use it all the time, doesn't it help people or doesn't that cause people to get used to them and become complacent? Uh, yes, it can. Um, the strobe light, we definitely want to use it in inclement weather um, when it's foggy, rainy, uh, when it's dark outside. That just gives other drivers one more um, warning that the school bus is close. Um, so yes, you can just use it in inclement weather when it's dark, um, but really like to use your headlights and clearance lights, um, lights on for safety. We have those on at all times. Um, some buses don't have them, that's correct. Uh, heavy rain is bad. Uh, they always want to run on or off the bus when it's wet, and I've had a lot of kids fall because it's slippery. Yes, yeah, so just like Mr. Goswell said, um, communicate with your students. Let them know the expectations um, that when it's wet to just remain those normal procedures. Remain calm, walk for your safety um, so that you don't trip and or so that you don't slip and fall. Um, as long as you do the same thing all the time, it's repetition and your students know the expectations that you have of them. Okay, so movable objects, um, parked and moving cars. Um, parked cars are considered movable because that's not something every day. You might get to a stop one day and there's no cars or the next day um, there's cars, you know, they park along the street. Um, and students can kind of like duck out from in between them. Um, pedestrians, construction traffic, trash cans on trash day. Um, you know, they might hide behind them or they might even be, you know, sitting down on the sidewalk behind them to where you can't see, uh, have that direct view of them. Dogs and wildlife. Um, I've been startled out there subbing those country routes, you know, how they uh, the dogs just like to dart out in front of you, um, so that's always something to be mindful of. Um, and then students retrieving dropped items is a big thing as well. Make sure that the students know if you drop something, communicate with the driver and the driver will give you directions to get that item. Don't just take it upon themselves to get that item. A cow out in the country. That is correct. I've heard plenty of y'all say that the cows are out. And <laughs> the dispatchers used to say, don't make a ground beef. Any more questions on movable objects? All right, our fourth category is distractions. Bear with me, I'm loading the video. My name is Sidney Harkless, and I've been driving for driving for Brian ISD for a year and a half. I have dealt with many distractions. I do my best to maintain a consistent schedule on my route. If I am too early or late, my students might try to run towards the bus and they may not pay attention to their surroundings. 
I've also seen where students horse play around, uh, getting off the bus and push each other towards the streets and roads, which is unsafe. I make sure my students are completely out the roadway and far enough away from the curb before departing. I have also experienced students and parents trying to communicate with me while I'm at my stop. I make sure not to make eye contact or take my eyes off the road uh, from approaching and uh, traffic and uh, making communication brief and not interactive. I want to make sure my goal is safe bus stops and <laughs> comprised from conversation that may be held at a later time. Once my students are boarded, I pay attention to the parents and siblings that remain at the stop as I pull away. They might be returning to their houses or waiting on another bus, but I ensure that they are far enough away from the bus and I'm not in my blind spot. Okay, so some distractions, like he said, um, if the bus is off of schedule um, too early or too late, um, then parents go back inside and call the bus barn. Um, if the if you're early to the stop, um, the student might run to the bus um, so that you don't miss them. Um, so if you are off of if you are off schedule, just be mindful that the children might not be where they are where they normally are. Uh, they would be running to the bus to catch it. Uh, communication with the driver. Try to keep it brief. Uh, remember, when you are at a stop, it is your priority to pay attention to those students that are crossing the street, that are entering the bus, exiting the bus. Um, your main goal is to be attentive to them, to communicate with them when it is safe to cross the street, um, to have eye contact with them to see where they are going, to make sure they are out of the danger zones around the bus, um, to make sure that they're making it home safely or to the bus. Uh, pedestrians at the stop after pulling away. Uh, you'll pull up to a stop and there's a lot of people, there's children and parents. You're there to pick up your children and get them on the bus. But as you are pulling away from the stop, there will be parents and siblings maybe waiting on another bus or the parents are returning home. Um, so just be mindful of them and where they are. Make sure that they're safely on the curb, um, out of your way and out of the street. Um, some things that I've seen is, you know, the parent and the student will be crossing the street. The parent puts the student on the bus and then the parent will walk back across the street. So just be mindful of where they are before you depart the stop. Horse play is also a big thing. Um, yes, it is a safety issue. Um, you know, as the bus is pulling up and you see kids or horse playing, slow down. Try to communicate with them, hand signals, and you know, cut it out. Uh, but just slowly approach the stop. And remember, if you're stopping that 10 to 15 feet away from the students, that they won't be right next to the bus. You don't want them pushing each other into the roadway uh, next to the bus. Um, and then also, you'll see some of them want to like push and shove or like run towards the bus to see who gets on it first. Um, at the bus stops in the morning and at the schools. Um, you know, the teachers kind of help with that, telling the students to slow down, you know, make a single file line. Um, just be mindful and make sure that you set that expectation with your students clear that horseplay is not allowed and explain to them it's a safety issue. Do we have any questions on bus stop hazards? Is there anything we didn't cover that y'all see at your bus stops that could be a hazard to the students and the bus? And if you do see these things, if it's a, if it's a routing issue, make sure you're getting with your routers. If it's a disciplinary issue, make sure you're getting with uh, Mr. Claudel, write a referral um, document these occurrences um, so that it can be addressed. Dogs, people out running or walking dogs, yes, garbage trucks, um, those are all good things. Um, just make sure you're being attentive of them. And remember, a bus stop isn't won't be the same day after day. There's always something different that you will have to cope with um, and deal with.
to make that stop safe. Now we're going to be talking about the danger zones of the bus. several danger zones around a school bus. The danger zones of the bus extend 10 to 15 feet around the bus in all directions with the most crucial zones being immediately to the front and the rear of the bus. School buses are equipped with a seven mirror system to include crossover mirrors. However, these zones remain dangerous. On my route, I have my students walk 10 feet in front of the bus before crossing to keep my front danger zone clear. This allows me to make full eye contact with the students and be in full view of the driver. My students also know that it is never okay to cross behind the bus. If a student were to cross behind the bus, they would be out of my direct view and I cannot communicate with them. When it is safe or unsafe to cross, I take time to know my students, names, stop locations. This allows me to count how many students board and unload at each stop. I know if three students are getting off, I should see three children safely on the sidewalk and out of the street before I move the bus. Students are unpredictable and might return to the danger zone if they drop a water bottle or personal items. My students know to make eye contact with me to get directions if they need to retrieve a dropped item. When I am loading and unloading, school I keep my attention on the students I am not distracted on my phone or speaking to others I'm sure students are loading and not or playing near or under the bus Okay, so like uh, Ms. Rubio said, the danger zones, 10 to 15 feet, all directions of the bus, with the most dangerous being right in front of and right behind the bus. Uh, do your very best to keep those students out of the danger zone. Uh, to do this, you make sure that the students walk 10 feet away from the bus and 10 feet in front of the bus if they are crossing the street. Um, I've seen while subbing that some students, they just get off the bus and they dart right in front of that bus. You can use those crossover mirrors, but still there's there's a danger zone right there and some students still can't be seen. Um, it's extremely dangerous and make sure you know that you communicate with your students once again. If they know these expectations, then they will follow them day by day. Um, so make sure that they're walking in front of that bus and waiting for your signal to cross the street. Um, that other video also showed where the students wait at the bumper and look left and right again and then proceed on to make sure that nobody's running those red lights. Uh, also at the schools, like she said, you know, don't be on your phone, don't be talking to other drivers, things like that. You're still, you're still the bus driver, you're still on duty, you still should be looking around the bus, paying attention to those students. Um, I've seen some of them, you know, the students are on the side of the bus playing with the light or touching the tires. Um, some, some of the students still walk in between the buses. Um, the teachers and the officials have been done better with that, uh, you know, being attentive to them and making, once again, making the expectation clear that you're not to walk in between the buses. And before you push in that parking brake and depart at the school, at the schools, Make sure you check all your mirrors, check that danger zone. Um, I really like the schools that I go to where the officials, they, they look around the bus, they make sure it's clear, and then they give you the thumbs up or they wave you on. Um, so that's another good thing that schools are doing. Any questions or comments about the danger zones? Jane Long does that really well, he does.
All right, now we're going to talk about unsafe stops and reporting hazards. Good morning. My name is Warren Lanfear. I'm the Director of Transportation for Bryan ISD. I'm going to talk to you today about routing, uh, especially how, it, how we deal with uh, setting up new, uh, new stops for kids, some of the safety considerations that we look at when we're uh, considering where we're going to place a stop and uh, maybe how we're going to approach the stop. Um, some of what we look at is uh, whether or not the stop is on the door side of the bus. We, as, as much as possible, we want to eliminate opportunities for uh, children to have to walk across the street to get on the bus. It is important uh, that as, as often as possible we're picking up on that door side. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into routing a, a child. Um, how, where they, how far they have to walk, um, our district has a rule of a one-third mile walkout, so we generally can put a stop anywhere for up to a third of the mile from the stop. But that's not always the case, because in rural areas, we sometimes have uh, uh, private driveways that can be a half mile or a mile long, and, and we're picking up out of, out of the highway. Um, so those are, are some other considerations. Um, some of the other things we look at are like sidewalks. You know, you have places like Woodville Road where there's no sidewalks and just a ditch. So we're going to do the best we can to pick that child up as close to their home as possible. Um, at an intersection, um, some of the other things we would, you know, keep in consideration is, is uh, you know, in the winter when it's dark, you know, is there any light there? Um, is the stop near a corner? Um, is it uh, an area where there's a lot of high-speed traffic? Other considerations that sometimes people don't think of is uh, its proximity to a registered sex offender. Um, sometimes that can become a concern. And that could be a reason why this why stops get moved sometimes. Uh, we end up moving stops for, for situations like that. We end up moving stops for situations where there's um, reports of uh, vicious dogs. Um, we sometimes move stops because uh, changes in traffic. You know, it's sometimes like, for instance, we are going to have a large construction project along William J. Bryan. And once that project starts, all kinds of stops are probably gonna have to get moved because of the uh, changes in the traffic patterns in that area. Buses won't be able to go down certain roads. Um, some other considerations uh, when it, that a driver should think about when, as they're uh, considering uh, their stops is to make sure that they approach their stop the same way every day, uh, unless there's you know a need to approach from a different direction, as I was just speaking about the uh, construction and things. But it is always very important that the parent and the child see their bus come from the same direction every day, especially when we're using uh, student or parent parent facing apps like. Uh, here Comes the Bus, which is a new app that we're going to be starting using here in the next month or so. Uh, Here Comes the Bus tells the parent uh, where the bus is at, um, when the bus enters their neighborhood, and it gives them an idea of how long it is going to be until the bus gets to their house. So it's real important that the driver continues to drive that route the way it's designed. Another reason it's really important to do that is if you as the regular route driver are ill, or you have to take a day off and a substitute driver is driving your bus, it becomes a really big challenge for them because they have a bunch of kids start yelling at them from behind them saying, you're going the wrong way, you're going the wrong way, this isn't the way the driver goes. So it's really important that you drive it the way that your router has designed that route um, for lots of reasons. Um, we get paid reimbursements based off of the miles that we drive and what we report to the state is the routed miles and when the routed miles and the actual miles are considerably different it starts to create problems in our reporting processes sometimes when you are uh, looking at your route it's, it might not make sense to you 
uh, how it's how it is routed, the direction it's going. And uh, I can assure you that both of or all of our routers, all three of our routers, know the community very well. They're you know staying. They're informed by local law enforcement. They're informed by the city and the county about changes or plan changes. Uh, another thing that um, they have to take into consideration that you might not be aware of is that we transport uh, students to special programs, things like Odyssey and Inquire, advanced placement programs. We have bilingual students, and these students are allowed to go to campuses that may not be in their zone. So you may be picking up a student uh, in the Johnson zone that is going to go to Crockett, and the, that's going to make the route look awful strange sometimes. So. Um, if you have questions about your route and why something is going on, you should most definitely send an email to your router, whether it's Gary Bunch or Tina Burrell, or if you're a SPED uh, driver, then, you know, either to Claudel or to uh, Becky. Um, so if you have questions, definitely ask before you make any changes to the way that you're driving your route. Something else that's very important for you to do as you're out there, you're the one that is out there seeing what's going on. You need to, um, if you see changes in, in, in your neighborhoods, if you see that uh, that um, sidewalks are being built or put in, uh, we might not know about that. It's really good to let your router know. If you see, um, if you see that at a particular stop that you have, that you're getting regularly having uh, uh, illegal bus passings occur, you should report that. Definitely report it, fill out the uh, form that I've sent out to y'all, but also report that to your router that this is happening all the time. Is there a possibility that we can move this stop to an off street location? So the uh, biggest thing I can ask you guys to do and gals is to, is to follow those route descriptions, ask questions when you don't understand and do everything you can to protect your kids every day. Thank you. Good. So, um, unauthorized stops, make sure that the students are only um, getting off at that location that's on their route sheet. Um, typically, when a child is missing um, or unaccounted for, it's because they weren't dropped off at that stop on their route sheet. Um, and then subs have a hard, very hard time running your route when students are like, oh, but they dropped me off at my house or oh, I used to live here, but I live here, and it doesn't get changed on the route sheet. So we have, just like Warren said, we have to be following those routes as they are on the route sheet. All three of our routers, they know the community. They know they have a reason for routing that bus the way that it is. Um, and if hazards appear to stop, report it immediately to, dis to dispatch and your router. Um, I also heard on the radio where y'all say, oh, I can't get to the stop today because of this. Um, when it's when it's been raining really bad, you know, and it floods out there in the country, uh, just get with dispatch. They'll tell you what to do. They'll probably call the parents um, and see about getting that stop, getting the child picked up somewhere else. Um, but if if you aren't communicating with your routers, they can't do anything about it. They don't know. So make sure you're in contact with your router. Don't take it upon yourself to change the route. Get with them. Um, in the afternoon, you want us to go strictly by the route description and go to stops even if a student is not on. Um, Ms. Hardy, that's a good question. Um, Y'all do, I have heard drivers call into base and say, I'm rerouting because students aren't on. Um, typically the way the routes are, you're gonna be driving by that, like the routes that way anyways, you're gonna be driving by that stop. But if it's, you know, all the way out in the country or it's on the other side of town and that student isn't on, then no, you can just call into base, tell them that you're rerouting and take it from there. Any questions about routing, um, why things are routed the way they are, uh, how to get in contact with your router. Um, Warren brought up very good points um, as to why those routes are the way they are. And if you take those into consideration, 
Um, and that's why that route is routed that way, and you need to follow it. Um, email your routers ASAP. Um, talk to Claudel. Uh, get those get those routes correct. And our last point is um, vehicles illegally passing our reds. Good morning. My name is Eddie McCoy. Uh, I drive for Bon SD for about maybe 15 years or so. I want to talk to you about running red lights, please. When you know you see the warning light, flashing lights on the bus, please stop and uh, allow the child to cross the street to come get on the bus or you get off the bus. We have the kids stand 10 feet away from the bus and get on and off. For your protection and their protection, we want to have a safe trip home as well as to school. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Okay, so this diagram kind of shows uh, which cars have to stop whenever you put your red lights on. Um, so if it's a two-lane roadway, um, cars behind you and oncoming traffic must stop. If it's a two-lane roadway with a center turning lane, same thing, um, traffic in both directions must stop. Um, and you want to make sure that you're staying in that right lane. You know, we don't veer into that center lane, don't try and use the bus as a way to stop those cars from passing your reds because then you open up your danger zone on that right side of cars that might pass on your right. Um, so always stay stay in your lane of travel, which should be the far right lane, and turn on those red lights. Um, a four-lane roadway without a median separation. Um, cars in both directions still must stop. The only time that a car, that oncoming traffic does not have to stop is if it is a four lane or more with a median separation. Uh, so if there is a grassy median, if there's conc if it's um, raised concrete, things like that. Basically, uh, the analogy is if you can roll a ball all the way across the roadway, then everybody has to stop. If you roll a ball and it stops on the median, then the oncoming traffic does not have to stop. Uh, does anybody have any questions about which cars are required to stop? And like Warren said, um, School Bus Safety Week is coming up, so they're going to be trying to enforce this. Um, they're going to put heightened awareness on it uh, and let the community know who has to stop in what situation. So reporting, um, make sure that if you do have um, if you do have somebody illegal illegally pass your reds, um, notate the date and time that it happened, um, the location, and a description of the vehicle, um, the make, model, color. Uh, those are all good things. If you can get that license plate number, that's great too. Um, always have like a little piece of paper, uh, your route sheet. Um, I always carry index cards. Uh, just have it readily available somewhere right there with your pen um, and notate down as much as you can. Um, be observant of the car, but also keep in mind your top priority is the safety of that child. So don't focus too much on getting that license plate number and exactly you know what color shirt the driver was wearing um, also keep in mind that your you know your top priority is the safety of that child so pay attention to them communicate with them let them know let them know when it is safe to cross uh, Warren did send out a form to your emails it looks like this um, your email address name uh, the intersection or the address where it occurred a license plate number and the description of the vehicle. Uh, he sent this out to your emails a couple times now, um, so make sure that you're filling these out as they happen. Uh, Texas Avenue, they don't stop. That's yeah, that's 
we've had a lot of that happen, but just make sure that you're filling out this form, uh, making them aware. Uh, what about stops at four-way stops? Um, so technically, if you're at if you're stopping at a four-way intersection, um, you're going to be stopping 10 to 15 feet before that intersection, depending on where the students are crossing. So another reason that uh, routers have the buses routed some ways because they know where the child's house is and which direction they will be crossing. Um, so they have you approaching that stop at a certain way so that ideally the student doesn't have to cross but if they do have to cross it's the um, road that the bus is on so that they can safely cross in front of the bus um, and if you ever have a problem where students are do have to cross the bus and it is a it's an ongoing problem with um, vehicles running your reds. Talk to your routers. See, is there a way to get that stop changed to where they are on the door side? Um, make sure you send them an email. If it is, if it's you know constantly going on and it is an unsafe situation, make sure you email your router and let them know so that something can be done about it. Another big thing about um, illegally passing is communication. Once again, make sure you make sure your students know your expectations. They walk 10 feet in front of the bus and they make eye contact with you until you give them the all clear to cross the road. Make sure that they also, the students also know that they also should be looking left and right. They should be aware as well as you and y'all should be in constant communication with them as they cross the road. Uh, if you see that the student's crossing and a car doesn't look like they're going to stop, let the students, ideally let them wait in the bus until that car has stopped. And once you know that that car has stopped, then release the students to go 10 feet ahead and then give them communication across. Um, if the students are in the roadway and a car just turned and is coming at you and it doesn't look like it, you can use your horn, um, you can shout, hand signals, um, anything to get that student's attention to let them know that it has now become unsafe for them to cross. Do we have any questions or comments about anything we covered today? All right, well, just remember um, student safety is our main priority. Uh, we want to spend um, October is the safety awareness month, but all months, all the time, we want to make sure that we are focusing on that school bu school stop safe, uh, bus stop safety, um, and keeping the children safe. All right, with that, I will turn it back over to Simeon. <laughs>